First, I wanted to thank everybody for such a, a really nice, positive response to this project, the TV Lift Cabinet. It's really uh, motivating to get a, just nice comments and a thumbs up. It just kind of keeps you uh, wanting to make more videos, so thank you. I really do appreciate it. Before we get started on the q and I wanted to talk about this little piece of molding at the top of the cabinet. I added this after the build. I really wasn't sure what to do with this. So uh, this is one of those things that came a little bit later. So let's go ahead and make this piece of molding and then we'll get into the Q&A. This is a piece of molding left over from the project and I started by ripping stock to half of an inch by three eighths and then I used a round over bit in the router and set the depth so I'd have a slight flute at the bottom of the molding. To get the flute at the bottom of the molding, I've set the depth of the router so the edge of the cutter just gives the molding a little bit of a flute. I clamped a quick jig to the work table and this will help hold the molding while I push the router along. So once I made the molding, I attached it to the cabinet with wood glue and pins in the pin nailer. Something else I thought I should point out, when I'm building something that gets heavy like this, I generally will try to build it on a piece of half inch or three quarter inch MDF and that makes it possible to move the cabinet around and sort of spin it around without marring up the plywood or whatever the, the bottom or the sides happen to be made out of. So in this case, I've got a little table, you can't see it's off camera, that's next to the table saw. And then, unfortunately, I use my outfeed table as my assembly table just because the shop's kind of small. But what I'm gonna do now is pick the cabinet up and I'm picking it up from the base of the plywood or the MDF, it's sitting on MDF right now. And so I'll get half of this MDF up onto the table saw and then I can position it Now I can get on the other side of the cabinet and slide this in place. It's just one of those tips for when you're working by yourself. You have to be able to kind of move things around without hurting yourself or also hurting the project. All right, so one of the first questions was, did I end up building the cabinet out of the cheap plywood that I made a video about uh, a week or two before the build? And I did because I really didn't have a choice. I didn't want to spend any more time running around looking for plywood. Um, I didn't really have too many problems, but it just, it's kind of a buzzkill when you know you're building with something that you, you despise, that you don't like. So uh, it worked out. And then another question was, it's actually kind of a two-parter, uh, what kind of wood did I build the cabinet out of? And then another person asked, why do I always use poplar? So I built it out of poplar. The reason why I often use poplar is because poplar is readily available. It's affordable. It has a really nice tight grain. It's easy to work with and it paints really nicely. I never really stain poplar. I use uh, poplar for painted projects. Uh, somebody asked, why did I build out the platform for the switch? And the reason for that is if I lost the clicker for the lift, uh, the idea is I can open the door, open the lid, and reach the manual switch. Uh, I felt that if I didn't pad that out, then it might be too far underneath the, the top of the cabinet to get my hand under. And another question was why even have doors on the cabinet? Uh, the reason for the doors are, one, you can open the doors and watch TV so I can see my daughter just opening the doors instead of um, sending the TV up and watching it that way. And also just as an access to be able to get to it. Um, so I guess that, that's that question. The um, a question was why use half inch MDF on the backs of the, the doors, the flat panel. And the reason why I use half inch as opposed to quarter is I like the heavier feel. The MDF that I'm using, it's a lightweight MDF, so it's not really adding that much weight. I'm not worried about it pulling the hinges or sagging. And um, 
I've been building doors that way for years and have always had good luck with them. They do inset into the cabinet a little bit, obviously a half of an inch further, so you have to accommodate for that uh, when you add the stops. Uh, in this case, I'll probably add a stop at the top with a magnetic catch, and that will stop and catch the doors. The hinge that I used for the doors, uh, at least one or two people uh, were upset that I used that hinge. I really like that hinge. It's a solid brass hinge. Um, and I'm going to end up making those hinges look a little special. This is a trick I learned from uh, my old boss at the woodworker. He would take a, a solid brass hinge and just sort of round the tops over a little bit and then buff the hinge with a buffing rouge, buffing wheel and buffing rouge. And it, it just gives a kind of a handmade look to the hinge and then let the hinge naturally tarnish. And that's the look that I want for this cabinet. So I like that look um, for this furniture. Different pieces of furniture call for different hardware. Uh, on the top, I'll be using the sauce hinge, which is an invisible hinge. Now, for the styles and rails for this cabinet, they're all two and a quarter inches. And I had an email, a uh, little confusion on building the face frames for the sides. Why only use inch and a half styles for the sides? And that's because an inch and a half and three quarters makes two and a quarter. So if you go back to the build, you'll see that I attached the sides first. And then when I attach the front and back face frames, that makes up that three quarters of an inch and gives me the full two and a quarter inches on the sides. When I'm hanging the doors, how do you keep the doors or position the doors? I use edge banding, the iron-on edge banding. I'll put, I don't glue it, I just put two pieces. I like that thickness, it's about a sixteenth of an inch. I put that on the face frame, lean the door up, and then mark out where the hinge is, and then take the hinge, hold the hinge up to the face frame, and drill out with a self-centering bit. It's also known as a Vix bit. If you Google Vix bit, you'll see, you'll know what I'm talking about. And then once the holes are there, then it's pretty easy to, uh, I connect the hinges to the doors first and then uh, connect the door to the cabinet. So anyway, I think that answers all of the questions. Uh, and um, I guess that's it. Have a great day and I'll see you soon.